Okay, so today we're doing a deep dive on a company that's, uh, you know, if you're interested in AI infrastructure investing, you're probably hearing about CoreWeave. And we're going to try to unpack, you know, kind of what's going on with the company, particularly as they're approaching this upcoming IPO. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're going to really break down uh, Core Reef for ES, an American cloud computing company. And they're really building their business around these super intense processing demands of artificial intelligence and similar workloads. Right. And they started back in 2017 as Atlantic Crypto. And it's interesting how that 2019 pivot to AI cloud computing and rebranding to Core Weave like really set them up well for this, you know, this whole AI boom that's going on. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to unpack all that. Absolutely. Our goal here is to just really, you know, lay out like what are their operations, what are their financials, what is this IPO all about so that you as an investor can kind of understand where they fit in this whole AI investment landscape. So maybe we can just start with what makes Coreweave different. Yeah. They're not really trying to compete with like, you know, the big guys, AWS, Azure, right. across the board, right? Their specialization is in providing this infrastructure that's really optimized for these GPU intensive tasks, right? Yeah. So we're talking about AI training, machine learning, Avidex, rendering batch processing, all this stuff. Yeah. And their offerings, I mean, they have things like bare metal compute nodes. So that's direct access to the hardware, uh, managed Kubernetes, virtual servers, you know, all these really, you know, yeah. high performance things like storage and network. It works. And then at the heart of it all, you've got these NVIDIA GPUs, which are like the, you know, the powerhouse processors. Absolutely. So you've got your, you know, the current high end stuff like the A100, the H100. And then you've got this, you know, this future stuff like GB200 and VL72. Yeah. And it's that constant adoption of new hardware that's really key. It is. Yeah. And their infrastructure scale is like really something to take note of. Yeah. By 2024, they had 32 data centers across the U.S. and Europe with over 250,000 GPUs. Wow. And, you know, this massive capacity is what's enabling them to claim some pretty impressive performance advantages. Yeah. They're reportedly up to 35 times faster, and they can offer cost savings to users right. as much as 80% cheaper than traditional cloud services when we're talking about these specific types of workloads. Right, right. Because if you're training a massive language model. Absolutely. That translates to, you know, weeks or even months of time shaved off of development and significant compute cost savings. Right. So it's a big deal. It really does give you a competitive edge. It does. So for us, you know, as potential investors. Yeah. What are the competitive advantages that really stand out with CoreWeave? Well, first off is this purpose built AI optimized design. Okay. So this is not like some general purpose setup that was kind of retrofitted for AI. Right. This is built from the ground up for these GPU intensive tasks. Okay. So they're using NVIDIA Quantum 2 InfiniBand networking, which is really critical for that efficient parallel processing that large models require. Makes sense, yeah. So, and their early entry into this whole GPU market is something I think, you know, a lot of people have been talking about. Yeah, how has that played out for them? Well, it all goes back to their crypto roots. Okay. That's where they were able to amass this, like, substantial early inventory of GPUs. Okay. And then combined with their strong partnership with NVIDIA, right. they've been able to build up this really massive stocks file of these processors, okay. which many competitors are still struggling to do. So, how about this bare metal efficiency thing? Yeah. What is the practical benefit of that so their approach is kubernetes native and virtualization free right so essentially you're getting direct access to that raw hardware power okay without all the layers of abstraction you find in those traditional virtualized environments so it's yeah. a speed thing it's a speed thing it makes scaling resources much simpler okay and you know that's essential when you're dealing with these massive ai models Right. So really by just focusing on this one area of, you know, these GPU intensive tasks, they can offer a more streamlined and cost effective solution. That's exactly it. Got it. By specializing in GPU compute, they avoid all that overhead and the costs of right. maintaining a more generalized cloud platform. OK. This allows them to optimize resource utilization and offer those competitive prices to those it. big clients like Microsoft Meta, OpenAI and everybody else. It's not just the raw power, though, is it? I mean, they're providing more of a ecosystem absolutely for users as well yeah it's not just about the hardware right. they're providing this managed platform with all these integrated tools right so you've got observability features to monitor performance right and then you've got their acquisition of weights and biases in 2025 okay which is a big deal because that's a significant platform for ai development workflow so this is more of like the whole package deal it's the whole package yeah. and it streamlines the whole process streamlines it all so i'm really interested in this financing strategy yeah this whole gpu back to lending 
interesting thing. Yeah, it's really innovative. Yeah, can you explain that a little bit? So essentially, CoreWeave has been able to use their investment in GPUs as collateral okay. to secure these huge loans. Okay. This has allowed them to access over $13 billion in debt. Wow. Which is funding this like super rapid expansion. Okay. You know, they're planning to add 10 new data centers just in 2025. Wow. So it's really bold, but it's allowing them to scale up quickly. So let's talk about the financials. Okay. Like for investors, what are the key figures here? Well, I think the biggest thing is this revenue growth. Okay. It's been pretty dramatic. They've gone from just $15.8 million in 2022 to $1.9 billion in 2024. Wow. And that's driven by this huge demand for AI compute resources. Right. So just in Q4 of 2024, yeah. they had $747.4 million in revenue with a 76% gross margin. Okay. And for those that may not know, gross margin is a pretty key indicator of profitability. Right. So then showing you know what's left over after they pay for the direct costs right, right. of providing those services. So that cop line growth is impressive, but I've also read that their net losses have been substantial. Yeah, that's true. So what's happening there? So while revenue is climbing, they're also seeing these net losses widen. Okay. It hit $863 million in 2024, up from $594 million in 2023. Okay. And the main reason for this is that they're spending a ton on infrastructure. Okay. You know, building out all that GPU capacity. Right. And they've also got to pay interest on all that debt we talked about. Yeah, it makes sense. So what about 2025? Yeah. Like, what are, we, what are we looking at in terms of financial projections? So the current estimates are projecting revenue around four point six billion dollars for 2025 okay and you know it's worth mentioning there was an earlier estimate of eight billion that was adjusted downwards okay but at the same time they're expecting a significant cash burn okay about 15 billion dollars wow so it really shows you how capital intensive this business is and how much they rely on external funding so are there any risks associated with their customer base that investors should be thinking about absolutely so they've got this Pretty significant customer concentration. Okay. In 2024, 77% of their revenue came from just two clients, Microsoft and OpenAI. Okay. Microsoft was 62% and OpenAI was 15%. So a huge chunk of their revenue is coming from just a huge chunk. Yeah. Two companies. Yeah. So you know that lack of diversification is definitely a risk. So given these, you know, kind of losses and this high level of spending, what's the path to profitability look like for CoreWeave? Yeah, so they did actually achieve a 17% operating margin in 2024. Okay. Which means their revenue exceeded their operating expenses. Right. But that was before interest and taxes and things like that. Right. Overall profitability is still a ways off okay. because they've got those debt costs and the ongoing capital expenditures. Right. And right now they're projecting a $10.4 billion shortfall for 2025. Wow. Okay. So there are definitely some challenges. So what needs to happen? I mean, what are the things that need to kind of come together for them to reach profitability? So they need to keep scaling their revenue really aggressively. Okay. Ideally, they'd get to like over $10 billion a year. Okay. Diversifying the customer base is going to be huge, right. you know, going beyond those two big clients. Right. And they're going to have to manage that debt load really effectively. So right now, what's the timeline? You know, best guess is two to three years. Okay. But that really depends on if demand for GPU computing stays high. Right. If they can attract more customers. Right. So now let's move on to the IPO itself. Okay. Which, you know, a lot of people are watching very closely. Yeah. What are the essential details we need to know about this? So they filed their S-1 registration statement with the SEC on March 3rd, 2025. Okay. And then they had an amendment on March 12th. Right. And that amendment included some details about their deal with OpenAI. Okay. It's a $11.9 billion five-year deal. Wow. And it also involved this $350 million private placement of CoreWeave shares to OpenAI. Okay. So they're planning to list on the NASDAQ. Okay. Under the ticker symbol CRWV. Okay. And they're hoping to do that in late March or early April of 2025. So what are they hoping to raise through this IPO? Yeah. And what's the anticipated valuation of the company? So they're targeting a fundraising range between $3 billion and $4 billion. Okay. And they're aiming for a valuation over $35 billion. Wow. And the initial price range for the shares has been set at forty-seven to fifty-five dollars per share. Okay. So it's a pretty big range. And who are the main players? Uh, you know, the financial institutions that are leading this IPO. So the lead underwriters are Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs. Okay. You know, they're the ones that are really marketing the IPO to investors and right. managing the share offering. So how does this IPO compare to their previous funding rounds? 
Yeah. Like what's been the trajectory of their valuation. So before this, they had that $1.1 billion Series C funding round in May of 2024. Okay. And that valued the company at $19 billion. Okay. And then they had a $650 million secondary sale in November of 2024. Right. And that bumped the valuation up to $23 billion. Okay. So this IPO valuation of over $35 billion yeah. is a big jump. So as of today, March 21st, 2025, what's happening? Yeah. Where are they in this process? So the pricing's all set. Okay. And the management team is on what's called a roadshow. Right. So they're going around talking to institutional investors. Right. Trying to, you know, get them interested in the offering. Right. And, you know, roadshow is really important because the market for tech IPOs right. is kind of uncertain right now. Right. And there are those concerns about customer dependency yeah. and the economy in general. Yeah. So investor reception is going to be really important. It's going to be huge. Yeah. So as we wrap up, you know, how would you strategically position CoreWeave within this you know, whole market landscape? Yeah. And what's your overall perspective on their future outlook for investors? So they've really become a key player in this whole AI hyperscaler space. Okay. So, you know, these companies that are providing this massive computing infrastructure that AI needs, right. they've got these strong partnerships with companies like NVIDIA Dell and, of course, OpenAI. Right. And those are, you know, really significant endorsements. Yeah. Now, they do face competition from other specialized providers mm. like Lambda and Data Crunch. Okay. But, you know, their early mover advantage in GPU scale and their tailored infrastructure gives them an edge. But we talked about the risks too, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. What are those? again? They're really reliant on NVIDIA's technology. Okay. And they have a lot of debt. Right. So those are two things that investors need to really consider. Particularly if, you know, NVIDIA's technology falls out of favor or something like that. Exactly. Or if the cost of GPUs changes dramatically or the availability. Right. So what's the big takeaway here yeah. for someone who's looking at CoreWeave as a potential investment? I think the key takeaway is that CoreWeave is really well positioned right. to take advantage of the huge growth in artificial intelligence. Right. This IPO is going to be a big test, though. Okay. You know, to see how confident investors are in this high growth, high risk model. Especially given their current financials. Exactly. So for you, the listener, we're thinking about this investment. You know, the key things are CoreWeave is a specialized provider for AI. Right. They've got this impressive revenue growth, but they also have these big losses. Yeah. And this upcoming IPO. It's a mix of opportunities and risks. It is. So given all that, yeah. you know, you have to ask yourself this question. What's that? How much does the, you know, the huge capital investment needed right. and that concentration of major clients, yeah. how much does that factor into the company's long-term success? That's the big question. And their ability to become profitable. And how sustainable is all of this? Yeah, exactly. In this like constantly changing world of AI. It's a good question to keep in mind as you're doing your research. Absolutely. So thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next time. See you.